Welcome to the tutorial setting up the network. This tutorial is obviously just for Animate Pro users and not for Animate users as there is no network in Animate. So let's begin by clicking on the network tab and then pulling it out somewhere into the center of the software so that it has its own window. So the network view is superior to the timeline view for many different reasons. Uh, the principal reason being that it is not a slave to the stacking order. So if we take a look around the network view, we'll notice there's a few features. We have our usual view menu here in the top left hand corner that has menu commands and items that are specific to the network. A lot of those commands are repeated here in the network view toolbar. Um, if you do not see the toolbar for the network view, you can always go to Windows, Toolbars, Network View in order to bring it up. Here in the left hand bottom corner, we have something that we call the navigator. And you can navigate around the network view by you know, clicking on the space button and pulling uh, the screen around. Um, you can use the zoom in and zoom out as well. Um, but you can also move the navigator around to get to where you want to go. So if you're very, very far away, for example, you can see an overall view from this perspective. So sometimes it's faster just to move this to get to where you want to go instead of trying to pan across um, for a very long time. Then the last thing we have is the group hierarchy menu, which is this right here. Um, and the example would be more obvious if we were actually inside a group. So let's go inside the bird group, which is a group I created from the birds that we created in the previous tutorial. And to enter a group, you simply need to click on this gray arrow here on the right side. So now we're inside the group. So you can see down here that we see that we're in the bird group. And if we want to return to the top group, we just have to click on top here. And now we've returned to the main network. So a network is composed of modules. So let's take a look at a module. So modules generally look something like this. They generally have an import where they receive information, um, a blue or, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be blue out port in which after whatever's processed in the module is fed out to the rest of the scene. There are five different types of modules. In fact, and only a few of them are displayed here, but there are drawing modules, effect modules, input and output modules, which are otherwise known as display modules, move modules, which are known otherwise as pegs, and composite modules. So here we see the input output, which is the display. We see the composite. We see a drawing module. Um, we do not see any effects and we don't see any pegs right now. So I'm just gonna drop one in from the, the module library so that we have something to talk about. Let's bring the network back there. Um, so let's drop in, uh, we'll go to favorites, let's drop in a peg, and let's drop in some type of an effect. So let's say Buller Radial. There we go. And actually I'm going to use uh, Command F or on Windows that's Control F to make it half screen and then once more to make it full screen. So these are our other types of modules. So generally a drawing module looks something like this. It has a green import where it can accept position and movement information and generally this comes from a peg, so something like this. They have a blue outport which allows them to outport their drawing. You can even see here that the drawing type is a TVG, which is a Toon Boom vector graphic. Um, the black arrow on the right side shows you a thumbnail of what that drawing looks like in the scene. And the yellow box that appears on all modules opens up the layer properties, which is the same thing as the module properties. So a peg, on the other hand, is always denoted in green and gives movement and position information. Because there is a, both a green import and an outport, you might understand that the information being exported um, is all position and movement, but also that it can accept position and movement information. So if we copy and paste this peg so we have a second peg, you can actually hook a peg to a peg like this and so on and so forth. So the peg also controls the Z nudging information. So I don't know if you remember, but in the previous tutorials, we were nudging the body parts of the karate rabbit back and forth along the Z axis. So that information is also housed in the peg. 
If each of these drawing elements has its own peg, as in the parts of the cartoon rabbit, and the Z information is different in each peg, the composite takes the information from the peg that is hooked to the drawing module that is entered in this green port right here. So even if this one is negative 4 and this one is plus 1 and this one is 0, whatever is hooked in to this port on this side, this green one, is what the overall composite's Z position will be. So if this wasn't the network for a scene but the network for a character, then in the scene it would have a Z position of whatever was hooked into this green port. So the next type of module to look at is the effects module. So I have a very simple one here, which is the blur radial. You usually attach effect modules under the drawing and between the drawing and the composite. So if I hold down the Alt key, I can slide this module in right here. And then if you click on the yellow box, you can fool around with whatever parameters are inside to modify this effect. Not all effects are as simple as the blur radial. We knew to hook in the drawing because the import is blue. However, you can also get effect modules that have green ports or that have two blue ports. So let me give you an example. So let's drop in the tone and then the the apply image transformation. So if we take a look at these two effects, let's look at the tone first. You'll notice that there's two ports at the top and that they're both blue. So the port on the right is actually looking for the drawing in which you would like to perform this effect on, whereas the port on the left accepts a matte information. So a matte is something that you might either use on top of this drawing to exclude this effect or include this effect. Um, over this drawing. And then of course there's a port that will take this information and then transmit it out which you can then hook into the composite. So I'm going to delete that. And then if you look at one like the apply image transformation you actually have three ports at the top two of which are green and one of which is blue. So the blue port would obviously take in the, the drawing information and the green ports would take in a position or movement information. So I'm just going to expand this window again. So the next module that we can take a look at is the composite module. And the composite module by default exports a bitmap. If you click on the yellow box here you can see the composite properties. I'm not going to go into them but here you can see where the bitmap is selected. You can also export as a vector or as a pass-through. Pass-through allows all the elements that are hooked to your composite to remain both as vector objects and also as separate objects so they aren't flattened together. And when something is set as pass-through, it's very obvious because the shape of the composite changes to this sort of uh, triangular shape here. I'm just going to close this. So I mentioned before that the Z access information or the Z position information is given to us by the pegs, but the composite also plays a role in that. Say that you have a scene with many elements or groups that have exactly the same Z value. Well, the composite would then take into consideration its position along this row. So those modules that are hooked closer to the left side or this green port are considered to be in front, such as the punching bag that is in front of the dojo. And those elements that are at the end are considered to be at the back, so the mountains that are in front of the sky, with all of these elements in front of the mountain and the sky. So the other modules that are remaining are the display module, which I'm going to devote an entire video to, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. Uh, the camera, which we'll talk about more when we animate, and the right module, which we'll talk about more when we actually do our final render. So let's go over some of the basic things again. We already know that you can take modules from the module library and then drag and drop them into the network view here. Uh, another way is that you can add pegs and elements by shortcuts such as command P to add a peg on Mac. I think it's control P for Windows. Um, you can also add them through this menu here, insert elements, so it's also command R. Uh, you, you saw a lot of those uh, shortcuts that were listed beside in this menu. 
insert. Uh, so group, display, composite, they all have their own shortcuts to add them quickly if you need to. Um, we know that you can organize your network by selecting them all, either by dragging a bounding box around all of them or by using the keyboard shortcut Command A to select all and then by using either of these two buttons to fan them out in that sort of onion shape. Um, here you have the decision if you want to change the percentage of overlap, the layer spacing, the vertical spacing. So you can actually decide the spacing between everything that you see here. I generally think it's, it's pretty good the way it is and I don't consider it to be a big deal uh, as long as they're clear, um, clearly mapped out in the network view. So I would say OK. And that fans them out so they're a bit more organized. Um, we already know that you can unhook and hook modules just by clicking on the, a port and then by pulling and it releases them. And if you're actually using this, you'll feel that sort of magnetic pull. You can then draw out a wire and then also snap it into position on another module. Um, we already know that you can grab a module and use Alt to um, put into place and automatically hook it without having to unhook like this and unhook like this and then do it manually. So the Alt always sort of works more nicely both for both for adding um, modules and for releasing modules from the network. So I'm going to go back to the regular view. to show you the next uh, the next part. So you may have noticed the text here is in red and then if you also notice in the timeline it's because it's disabled. So that red indicates that something is not being seen in the camera view. So to disable something you can select it in the network view and use the keyboard shortcut D which will disable it. If you then have the same uh, module selected and then use a the keyboard shortcut A it re-enables it. You can do that for this one as well. You can also select a module and use these buttons up here to enable it or disable it. Um, say you have multiple modules disabled, you can use the menu here at the top, the view menu, and go to modules, enable all, which allow you to see everything that's available in your timeline. Um, there is no disable all because it's probably um, a rare action that you'd want to make every single thing from your camera disappear. The one thing I forgot to mention about the enable all is that if you have a group such as what we do with the birds and they all happen to be disabled and then we you know disable a few other things here and then we use the top menu item uh, modules enable all the elements in the bird group will remain disabled because those commands just work for whatever is in the top layer or the layer in which you are performing your enable all. Um, okay, so now let's talk about grouping. And so it's good that I brought up the birds because we're going to look at that as our group. So this is already grouped. I'll show you how I did it from the start. So let's select it first to ungroup it. So you can go to the menu item, edit, group, ungroup selected layers. And so now these are disabled, but they are ungrouped. So the way that you can group something is by selecting those objects. And obviously going back and doing the reverse of what I just did and going to edit, group, group selected layers, or you could use a keyboard shortcut, Command G on Mac or Control G in Windows. However, as we see here, this group has these four wires coming out, and we know why this is. If you enter the group, we'll see here, let me just organize these, that um, it's because there are four elements in this group which are all being put through directly through the multiport out. And of course, the multiport in is what gives us this little green node here at the top that accepts um, position and movement information and the multi-port out is what allows us to have these ports that are escaping from the group. Um, and once again, we can even rename our group by going to the yellow box and saying birds. But a better way to actually group all of this is to group it with a composite. Because if we group it with a composite, then we're only going to have one wire that comes out 
of the bird group. So let's ungroup this again. And this time when we select these birds, I'm just gonna bring them out over here, and we select them all. Uh, we can right click and select a command that says group, group selection with composite, and the keyboard shortcut is shift command G, or I believe shift control G like that. And now you'll see there's only one wire that comes out to be hooked in the composite, so this looks a lot cleaner. But in fact, we have four ports in the top to give four different position information. And let's enter our group. Okay, let's actually do this like that. So here's our composite and it cleans all of this up for us. There is, however, a warning that goes along with the group selected with composite command. Generally, it's never good to group with a composite if the stacking order in the timeline actually means something. So in this case, we don't care which bird is in front. It doesn't matter, so it was fine. Also, if you have effects, it's generally not a good idea, as well as if you have layers in, in between the bird layers. So say when this was ungrouped, we had the balcony between two birds, it would have gotten grouped together with the composite in this group. So those are the three factors you have to look out for when you group with a composite. So there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Let's enter our group again and add something like, um, let's add a, a drawing element like that. So say we're in a group and we have an extra drawing element and then we realize that it really doesn't belong in this group and we want to send it back out to our main network, so to the top, the principal network group. We can select that element and actually right click on it and say move to parent group. And then if we go back to the top, we'll see this element out here was brought out into the main or principal network. And I believe that also exists in the top menu, module, move to parent group. And it's disabled because we're not in a group right now. So I'm just going to delete that. So I think it pretty much goes without saying um, that anything that you add to the network appears in the timeline and anything that you add to the timeline appears in the network. Um, obviously because, like I mentioned before, the timeline is not as superior as a network, you might not see everything that appears in the network in the timeline in the way that it appears in the network. Well, there are certain things that look a bit different. Um, but here, if you know, if you add a drawing element right away, I believe it's over here, this drawing was added to your network and connected to the composite. And you can delete that and then it'll be deleted from your timeline. So there is that back and forth and that connection, although it's not 100% and not 100% perfect. And the last thing I want to show you, which is something really small, is that before I was showing you that you can click on this black arrow to get a thumbnail of the drawing object. Um, sometimes when you don't see these thumbnails, you can generate them by clicking on this render view button here. And generally, if there's some thumbnail missing, you'll be able to bring it up by clicking on the render view. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial setting up the network. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, the display module.